So we worship deities. We should worship deities in fact. Because worshipping God every day is Nitya Karma. And if you are not doing Nitya Karma, then you will accumulate sins. Right? So doing Nitya Karma is very, very important. But many a times what is happening, what I have seen, that people are not doing worship properly. This creates great problem. So we will learn how to do worship properly so that God listens to you. And you don't do any mistake. You know, in Tantra, there is a concept that you should worship God after being a God. First, be a God yourself, then worship the God. Right? This is there. So, first of all, you should clean your body, take a bath. Right? If you cannot take a bath, then at least wash your hands and feet. That is very necessary. Or you can, you know, sprinkle Gangajal over yourself. But first of all, be very clean and pure before you start worshipping. And a calm mind is also very necessary while worshipping. If the mind is not becoming calm by itself, then you should try to make it calm by meditation pranayam, a method of which I will share. So this needs to be done. Not only that, two things are there, Bhuta Shuddhi and Papa Purusha Shodhan. This comes from Tatras, Tantras, many elaborate methods are there. Right? Tantrics know about it. But normal people generally don't know about it. This needs to be known. Because doing worship without these things is not very good. For Papa Purusha Shodhan, in general worship also, you take little bit water in your right hand, keep it near your nose and then you exhale in it. Imagining that all the you know bad samskaras or all the sins that you have committed by saying foul words and all of this is going into that water and without looking, you throw that water in your left side. And this is also done. But according to me, what I recommend, and this you should do before every puja, that as you sit for the puja and you have prepared all the asana and everything as such, you should sit straight. And then you should, first of all, imagine, see 10, 10 chidras or 10 holes are told in the body, two of the eyes, two of the nose, one of the mouth, two of the ears, one of the anus and one of the reproductive organ. Right? These things are told. Now, you should imagine that from these 10 holes, from these 10, you know, 10 areas, a dark type of, a dark fluid is coming. And that is being stored in the left side of your stomach. And it have taken the form of a person. This is called Papa Purush. Then you should imagine that in front of your head, little above your head, an idol of the goddess or the god that you are worshipping is present. And from the body of that deity, a white light is emanating. That you are breathing, then you should breathe and you should imagine that from all these eight, nine, ten holes that you have just imagined, from where the black fluid was coming, the divine white light of the deity is also entering your body and it have went to stomach and have killed this path purush, this black demon that you have made in the left side of your stomach and now it have turned into ashes. Then you should exhale. Imagining that the remains of these ashes from your stomach have been wiped out of the body in the environment, then you should exhale again. Imagining that again this white light from the DT is entering all the pores, all the holes of my body and it have taken over my complete body. This is called Papa Purusha Shodhan. This way Bhuta Shuddhi or the Shuddhi of the elements or the Shuddhi of the body is also done. You should only do this though Bhuta Shuddhi is an elaborate procedure that I don't want to introduce here. It is a tantric procedure. This you should do. So what happens? This is first of all because many bad thoughts, ideas can be in our mind. We must have committed many sins by hearing to the foul words, hearing to the criticism of God talking bad things, etc. You are abolished of all of these sins and most importantly, your mind becomes calm and clear and ready for worship. So this though you should do. 
right after sitting on asan and doing all of achaman etc this is the first thing you do before you start with the first step of the worship guru pujan so this is bhut shuddhi this should be done and my advice is be will be as my guru advised that even after the completion of worship sit for some time in the puja room imagine that all the mantras you have chanted the different words of it are floating in the air then once again start inhaling and imagine that from these nine ten doors two eyes two nostrils one mouth two ears one anus one reproductive organ right from these two to four six seven eight nine ten from these 10 areas the letters of the mantra that you have chanted or different letters of the hindi or sanskrit varnamala or in whichever language you have told your prayer is entering your body and these letters are being established in different parts of your body and now your body is you know completely unified with the mantra or in different parts of the body different letters of the mantras are there you imagine that and while with this imagination you can continue to have some light breathing this will make your body calm this will do two things all the power of the worship you will soak and it will really benefit you right soaking the energy of the puja is very important otherwise the energy remains in the temple and then you are not benefiting the first thing secondarily generally what i have seen that after puja people have headache and all of these things if one is into occasional puja they don't worship every day but they worship on special occasions only navaratri etc then they have health problems these are also very eradicated secondarily you see in tantra you know about shat karma maran mohan vashikara no chadan stambha etc two more hidden karmas are there which only top notch tantrics know pushti karan and shanti karan so shanti karan means what if there is some disease etc you have to calm it that is known as shanti karan if some aggressive plant is disturbing you have to calm it that is shanti karan and after recovery from disease the body is weak you have to strengthen it or if some good planet is weak you have to strengthen it this is called pushti karan now because in the worship also substantial energy is lost in mantra chanting concentration etc to make your body powerful again or to get more power from the divine this last process of pushti karan should be done so it makes sure that if you have a practice of doing it regularly it will make sure that you get less affected by diseases and you become physically more and more powerful these this last step should be done at the last after all the puja is completed do it for like 1 2 minutes and then you are free to get up so this bhut shuddhi and pushti karan is very essential and if you are not doing it you are missing on great benefits of worship this is very important this is very essential it comes from tantras one more thing is there when you are worshiping deity as i told you worship god by being a god most preferably like the god so when you are worshiping fierce deities you should be fearless right so getting because you will generally see that you are when you are worshiping fierce deities such as kali bhairav etc you will listen to voices and all of these things around you that is to test whether you are actually fearless or not so ignore it don't be afraid when you are worshiping rajasik gods like devi you should also be rajasik so wearing rajasik clothes silk clothes etc is recommended when you are worshiping shiva you should be detached like shiva when you are worshiping vishnu you should be calm like vishnu when you are worshiping surya you should be punctual like surya and when you are worshiping ganesha you should be satisfied and loving like ganesha this is very essential otherwise god in hinduism is considered as an epitome of what a man can reach and you should have that nature behavior quality in your nature also the nature of god one also wants to imbibe in their nature right if you are worshiping ram who is maryada purushottam and you are not keeping up to your words then how the energies of ram will work in your life so for the energies of ram to actually work in your life you want the energies of ram to work over you also and that will work when you follow this process become like god while worshiping god have the nature like god 
while worshipping God, this is very essential and this is very necessary. You cannot ignore it. This is something that has to be understood. Now coming to the worship procedure one by one. See, first thing is there. You wake up. After waking up, you should see your hands like this. And you should say, Karagrevaste Lakshmi Karamadhyaya Saraswati Karamule Tu Govinda Prabhate Karadarasham. You rub your hands and you keep it over your eyes. Even if you can't do, you do, do the mantra, just see your hands, rub it and keep it over your eyes. It does three things. When I was very young in 10th, 11th class, you know, I met with a person, you know, just an elder brother of a friend of mine who believed into astrology, but he had a question about palmistry that even those people have fortune who don't have hands, what do you say? So I told him that astrology is very supreme. Astrology indicates predictive things also. Astrology indicates nature as well. Palmistry more or less indicates nature. See, what is your nature? And according to the nature, things are going to happen in future. Right? You can change your nature and change the happening also. But 80% of the time, people are not able to change their nature. An angry person always remains more or less angry only. And I gave him a small exercise. That you do one thing, this Karavalokan that I taught you, I told him that you do this Karavalokan every day and what you will see that your lines will start chill. You know, your lines of the hands will start changing. And I also told him that these are the negative lines and these are the positive lines in the hand and you will see one of these lines will be changing. Now the person did it and he actually told me that Shivam, you were correct. You see, this line of mine was this way. Now it has changed. Okay, why I remember this? You know, some days ago he called me up. Now he is an IPS officer. He was preparing for these examinations at that point of time. Now he has got the job. So now he told that whenever I sit with other officers, I always say that I have a, you know, my younger brother have a friend, very good friend. He was inviting me to his marriage. And my younger brother have a friend who is you know, and into astrology and he have told me this thing and this have happened and he was just telling it to me so I just recalled it. So one thing happens with it, you know, what I told right now that the hand lines are more or less like nature and when you do this Karagre Vastri Lakshmi, your hand line becomes well, good, auspicious and if there are any negative traits etc. in your nature, jealousy etc. it starts going away slowly, slowly. Secondarily, rubbing this hand and keeping it over your eyes is very good for eyesight. And if you are having problems related to eyesight, then it will be really very, very beneficial for you. It is also told that it helps you keep your hair black. So that also you can do if you are concerned about your beauty. After that, because we are keeping our feet on Mother Earth and she is bearing our weight without complaining, we should show her gratitude, right? Gratitude you should have in your life. Otherwise, it is a you know, otherwise ungrateful person is not good. Being ungrateful is a bad behavior, and being ungrateful, you lose your say even on the things that you deserve because you are ungrateful, right? So for that, because you have just woke up and still in the bed, this have to be done while you are still in the bed. Before you keep your feet on the ground, there is one prayer that we see that we say. So we are imagining Artha Goddess as an info, as an incarnation of Mother Goddess Lakshmi and seeking forgiveness from her. This also you should do. And after that, you should check which nostril of yours is running. You should exhale. Keep your hands like this. Exhale. And whichever nostril you see is, you know, flowing more air, that leg you should keep, that feet you should keep first on the ground. It will make sure that auspicious things happens to you throughout the day. And any inauspicious bad experience remain away from you. And so this is the second thing that you should do. After that, it is very important to make your mind clean right in the morning so that good thoughts come to you. And you are not entangled in negative thoughts which will ultimately trigger you doing negative things. So for that, there is a particular mantra that you should do in the morning. Om Apavitra Pavitrova Sarvavasthanga Topiva Yasmarit Kundari Kaksha Bhaiya Bhintra Suchi. 
either you should do this mantra or it is ultimately told in the mantra that who takes the name of pundri kaksh becomes pure and clean from inside and outside so you should say pundri kaksh pundri kaksh pundri kaksh this name of sri vishnu thrice in the morning just after standing on the ground so that only good thoughts come in your mind only good vibes come in your life right so this also you should do very essential very necessary after that before worship you will you will take bath you can do worship any time for some gods the worship time is fixed right devi can be worshiped in night shiva can be worshiped in night generally in kali yuga almost all gods are worshiped in night satnarayan should be done in night krishna janmashtami is in night shivanathri is night navaratri is night right so you can worship any time but before worshiping you should take bath and you should wear two clothes worshiping in single cloth like women worship in maxi etc things like that is not recommended two piece of cloth one trouser and one for the upper body you should use this is very necessary more than two clothes can be there less than two clothes should not be there while worshiping you should either face north direction or north east direction or east direction or north direction also you can face and then you should sit on asan sitting on asan is very important if you are not sitting on asan then it is bad worship should never be done while sitting on the bare ground and asan is needed details about asan i will talk about it about art you should sit on an asan that is very very important now hmm. regarding this asan see generally asan will be like this it will be stitched from this side right asan will be stitched from this side this stitching side should be north to south right so say this is south this is north or this is south this is north and this should be east and this should be west you should be east facing or northeast facing either ways right and you should completely fit in the asan so asan should not be smaller than you than your hip preferably you should completely sit on fit on the asan sitting on asan is very compulsory otherwise it is so problematic after that there is something known as pavitri that is made out of kusha grass that you should wear in the sun finger of both hands anamika this is very necessary if you don't have pavitri with you then you can use a gold ring to wear also gold ring you can wear in one hand as well if you cannot get kusha every day then you can you know have some kusha for yourself on amavasya and you can use it throughout the week throughout the month sorry and if you don't have kusha then a gold ring will do that is there and if you don't have kusha or don't have a gold ring then also it is okay this thing you can skip though it should not be skipped it is very essential that's why i am putting it in such compact videos also but still if you cannot have it what we can do this you can skip also but pavitri is very important made out of kusha this is very very important after that tying the shikha is very important the priest the brahmin will generally have a shikha so you should do the shikha choti you should do and if there is no shikha if you are not having shikha then one thing you should do you should take some kusha grass put it over your forehead and even if you cannot do that then you should cover your forehead generally we cover our forehead while doing worship this is also very essential and ultimately you should put tilakam in your forehead in this putting tilakam on your forehead you should don't you know the tilakam that you have done to gods only that tilakam you should put in your forehead and a separate tilakam should not be made for yourself right after that there is process of achman generally achman is done while standing in water so you take water in your hands and do achman but in daily worship what we do we take a small pot a small glass and a small spoon around us using that spoon you give water three times in your hand so either you take three spoons of water or you can take one spoon of water from your left hand and put it in your hand three times by saying om keshavaya namah om narayana namah and om madhavaya namah after that by saying om rishikeshaya namah you should like again take water and by saying om rishikeshaya namah you should wash your wash your hand this is achman this is very necessary because after bathing till the start of puja you will touch multiple other things and impurities will creep in so this is a bath before the worship and this needs to be done for the purity so this is very special essential a cup or a glass with water and a spoon most preferably this should be ganga jal ganga water or water from any holy river or you can also take a tap water suitable for drinking you should take after that vinayog 
should be done. And for vinyog, what you should do, you should take water from the spoon and leave it on the ground. Generally, when you read any stotra, in the starting of the stotra, there will be mention of Rishi, Chand, Devata, and in the end, it will be told vinyog. So while doing the vinyog also, Om Asya, right? Brahma Rishi Anushtup Chanda Hasari Narayano Devata Vinyoga. By saying this Vinyoga, taking a spoon of water and leaving it on the ground is also very essential if you want to take 100% result of the Stotra or Mantra chanting. This is also very essential. It should also be done in the starting. The Vinyoga should be done in the starting. And after that, margin should be done. So in margin, what do you do? You take a spoonful of water or dip your hands into water and sprinkle the water over your body and over the idols of the over the idols of the deities. So to awaken them up and awaken your inner body as well. This is done. Right? If you cannot do Achman, if you are not having water or if you are thinking that the process of Achman is very you know, difficult for you, then you can touch the ear lobes of your right ear also. This is as well considered as Achman. Generally, Brahmins or those who are into a worship pledge, for example, you are worshipping Devi for the nine days of Navratri or something like that. If you encounter something impure, if you see something impure, if you touch something impure, there is a need for bathing, but you cannot bath every time. So touching the right ear lobe is the thing, then you quickly do the Achman. So if you are not having what you are standing or you are you know, going somewhere, doing this Achman, quickly touching your ear lobe is very is a shortcut method that you can do in worship also if you cannot do full fledged achaman touching the right ear lobe with your right hand is something that you can very easily very quickly do then after that as i have told in the previous videos also when you worship many because in many type of souls many type of bhutas are present everywhere at every time also when you sit to worship when you start worshiping then these bhutas can be you know around you so that they can take the good result of your worship and can get emancipation. Right. Also negative energies of people and people who don't want you to progress in life and people who are jealous of you, their negative energies, their negative thoughts can also disturb you. Right. It can also disturb you. So to save from this disturbance, they can disturb you while worshipping or some things can happen which will you know, force you to leave the puja room or leave the asana or change your position. And as you do that, the result of the puja is lost. And because it is an akhandit worship, you get blemish for that also. So save yourself from these things, to save yourself from negative energies, technically to wear a kavach made of mantras, you have to do digabandha. Now in this digabandhan, what you do, you technically take water in your right hand, cover it with your left hand. You can chant Gayatri Om Burbu Vasso Hatasya Vitravarenim Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Diyo Yonah Prachodayak. This Gayatri Mantra have to be read thrice. Then dipping your hand into this water, you have to sprinkle this water in all the ten directions. East, South, East, South, South, West, West. Right? Northwest, north, northeast, upward and downward direction, all these 10 directions, 8 directions, on only 4 cardinal directions, you can throw this water. And while doing this, you will do a small prayer that, oh God, protect me in the process of worship, after the process of worship, always protect me from evil energies, negative eyes, negativities, and it does the work that is recommended. Right? It saves you from negative energies, it saves you from evil eye, it saves you from negativity. Right? It does that. So this Raksha Karan should also be done. After this Raksha, as I told you in the starting also, a calm mind is needed. A calm body is needed. For that, Pranayam is done. So basically, Mantra chanting, Stotra reading, worshipping is a highly focused work, but our mind can often get disturbed. So to, you know, detach our mind from the world and put it completely into puja we need to channelize our breath or do a little bit of exercise like you see we take bath we clean our skin right with the bhuta shuddhi you have cleaned your mind but what about the other muscles other organs and all of these things what about the internal systems for that pranayam is done pranayam is very simple process first of all you should cover your Right nostril, take breath from left nostril, chant Gatri Mantra, Om then hold it, close both the nostrils. Chant a Gayatri Mantra. If the Gayatri Mantra is very big for you, you cannot hold air for that long, just to say Om Jum Saha. 
then cover the left nostril and exhale from the right nostril right while saying either gayatri mantra or om hom jum zah or any mantra that you like then stop the air outside don't breathe and say gayatri mantra once again this is process number 1 do it three times this is pranayam consisting of purak kumbak and recha this should be done thrice and this purifies your muscles muscular system nervous system and all of that and makes you in tune with the puja this should be done and after that vini yoga and ajman should be done again that you have learned before so this you should do after that after this you should take water dipping your hands into water now you don't dip your hand in the glass of water that you are using for ajman and all of that take some extra water or you can in a step take water in your left hand and put your fingers into that now sprinkle water seven times over your head once on the earth then once again on your head once again over your head this is for purification right that is a that is a bath that is a quick bath that you have done after that take water in your left hand cover it with your right hand right do the gayatri mantra and the sprinkle water again your head once again now you have done protection of the complete body after that the bhut shuddhi and papa purush shodhan should be done as i told you in the starting and if you cannot do the complete process then just take the water in the right hand take it near your nostrils exhale imagining that all the impurities of your body mind soul are going into that water and throw it in the left hand side without looking at it this will be a simple process of bhut shuddhi right but tantric bhut shuddhi that i have told you the starting is the best one to do now generally the, this process is completed and after that you can continue doing your worship right and there is no problem with that now some other miscellaneous things are also there generally after in you know generally in all the astrologers should worship sun god every day in fact every person should worship sun god every day right sun god gives you name fame status health recognition efforts you know results for your efforts and all of these things sun god gives and because sun god is the most visible form of god and almost every religion worships sun god you should thank sun god because he is making the day that is keeping the earth running the world running so you should thank him for that suri arg is a practice that is a very strong remedy for sun also and technically because sun is the king for all gods and sun is the king of all gods and because he is most powerful in naisargik pal when sun is powerful the blemish of all the planets or weakness of all the planets are gone so if one gives a suri arg properly have it in have it then all the blemishes and weaknesses of all the planets of the person's horoscope is done is you know taken out right so suri arg should be given every day suri arg is very important but people hardly know the procedure to do it correctly while giving suri arg generally you will have water in the pot so you you know like either you have water in your hands you are standing in the river itself this is the best place to do whenever you go to a river holy river you should give suri arg stand in the water take water in your hands or in home also take water in a pot have the pot in your hands and don't touch generally don't touch it with your thumb try not to touch it with your thumb and while reading gayatri mantra right read gayatri mantra while giving suri arg and give argya to sun to make it more effective you can add sandalwood and flowers into it and give argya to sun or if you want to remedy a specific planet you can add things related to the color of planet for example red vermilion or you know red kumkum or red sandalwood for mars etc in the suri argya water and give the argya to the sun which will strengthen the sun and the planet as well now if suri argya should be given in the morning afternoon evening at all the three times so if you are doing it all this three times the procedure is a little bit difficult or say you are giving suri argya in the noon also because you cannot wake up in the morning or you are giving suri argya in evening only because you have missed the morning and afternoon then how to do it in morning and noon 
one should give argy while standing on one foot so another the second foot generally the left foot should be little bit up in the sky whereas in the evening one can keep both the foot on ground now in morning when you are giving surya argya your head should be a little bit bent you know a little bit bent body should be there while giving argya in the afternoon you can sit straight and in the evening one should give surya argya while sitting as i told you generally when you wear when you you know visit a holy river before taking bath in the river or before doing anything if you happen to be at a place where there is a holy river you should stand in waters and give surya arg morning afternoon you should give arg in the water itself evening you should take stand in the water take water in your hands but the water should be dropped on some pure place not in the river itself if you are doing it at home then you should stand and you know like drop the water down and it should not touch your feet so what the best you can do is you can keep a vessel drop the water in the vessel and after that that water you can put in some flower pot or some other good place that will be good if you are doing the suri arg near a river in morning time then three anjali water one anjali water is this handful of water this handful of water is one anjali water right so three three anjali water you should give in morning and evening and one anjali water should be given in suri argya in the noon also if you are giving suri argya using a pot in your home you can have a measure of how much water comes into one handful of yours and that you can use right that much water you should give that is there along with this there is one more simpler process like whenever you worship because surya argya will want you to stand outside and all of these things so there is surya upasthan also that one does like you know like sun is the witness of whatever we are doing and this witnessing is needed like some people think god is always present god is looking at everything so what is the need for evidence there is no need of evidence for god but after you will die you will go to yamaraj and then chitragupta will ask for what you have done right so you need the evidence and another thing is there that by evidence god is omnipresent god is ever present that is there that is a particular concept that is a very good concept but that is for devotee only to reach to that level of devotee before you reach that level of devotee because you have so much impurities and malice in your mind that god don't even want to see your face right so your process of being a devotee and your process of getting merits you have to make the inferior gods not the superior god superior god is always looking at you but inferior gods or the attendants of gods you want to come into their sight right so for that you have to make your present fe presence felt right so surya upasthan is generally done to make your presence felt to sun and also to you know so to completely surrender to sun god surya upasthan is done it is done by chanting the mantra of sun so in the morning time when you are worshiping standing at the place where you are worshiping and lifting both the hands or you know lifting both the hands and doing a mantra of surya or just remembering the surya will be upasthan surya upasthan in the noon just taking your hands in the sky like this and the sky like this up like this and just chanting the name of sun god or just remembering the sun god will be surya upasthan and in the afternoon sorry and in the evening you can just sit at a place you can just sit at a place or sit into your temple and while sitting with folded hands you can do surya upasthan so you should remember sun god or just make a small prayer to sun god you should just say that sun god i surrender to you i am wanting my presence felt to you always remember me always bless me and as it is told in gayatri mantra take my intellect to the higher levels always guide me give me good thought make the world beneficial and friendly to me may i be loved by all may i love all this small prayer you can do you can add good things into this prayer or the vaidik mantra or mantra that is recommended that comes from yajur yajurveda that is done at the time of surya upasthan is om chitram devana mudgadanikam chakshur mitrasya varunasya agne apradhava pratri andriksham surya atma jagatastuscha this comes from yajurveda it is a very potent surya mantra this should be done 
So this Surya Upasthan also should be done, right? Other than that, see, one thing is there. When we are chanting mantra, we can chanting it into a mala, we can chant it into a rosary. Right? Generally, one can chant it into rosary also. One can chant it into hands as well. My favorite is chanting the mantra in hand because rosary, you need different rosary for different gods and there is a procedure to follow which this procedure is difficult also. So generally, I recommend using karmala, which is taking your hands as the mala and chanting mantra into it. And according to me, all your powers are also stored in the mala. So if you are into a danger and you have to chant mantra, you have to look for your mala, which is always not possible. And if you are have chanting the mantra in your hand, then you always have your hands. This first thing. Secondarily, if you are chanting mantra in your hands, then in that particular scenario, your power to give blessings or curse people greatly increases. So first of all, you should not misuse it. And you should only bless those people who are really worthy. If you are blessing someone who is unworthy, then you are going to take the bad karma of the person and he is going to enjoy your blessings. So you have to be very careful. But karmala is my favorite way of doing it because first of all, this is easy, simple. You can always have it. There is no need to change mala for every god. And because you always have your hands, you always have the maximum of your spiritual power and you become capable of blessings also. Now in this karmala process, what is done? There is a separate karmala for God and there is a separate karmala for Goddess in right hand for God. Right? You count the 10 mantras, right? Like Om Namah Shivai, 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 Om Namah Shivai. 10 times you have done it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? 10 times you have done it. This is the thing. For male gods. Right? Now, as you have done it 10 times in this hand, you should keep your hand over it that I have done it 10 times. So one hand over it in the left hand. Then once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Put it here that I have done 20 malas. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 30 malas I have done. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 30, 10. Uh, 39, 40. So 40 malas I have done. So 10 in these hands and after one repetition in this hand, put one finger in this hand. So 10 repetitions in this hand and 10 counting in this hand, 10 into 10, 108. Then after 108, remove the first flange and the last flange because 108 japa have to be done. Then Namah Shivai, 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 Namah Shivai. Eight extra you have done. So this is Karmala for the gods. For goddesses, the karmala is a little bit different. Generally, people don't know, so mistake happens. For goddess, one is here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is for Devi, ten. Put it one that I have done, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Put second finger here. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So put your finger here. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Put your fingers here. This way, 100 you will do. This hand will also go the same way. 100 you will do. Then for the last state, remove the first and the last flange. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 countings are done. This is Karamala for Devi, which I recommend. So in this karmala, you just have to change the counting for male and female gods. Right? Other than that, the mala is always available to you. It makes the chanting more effective. Other than that, if this is not that you are going to do and you are going to use mala only, then remember in this mantra chanting, first of all, japa is vachik. You are chanting the mantra by speaking least effective. Or you are chanting the mantra, just your lips are moving, but no sound is coming out. This is called Upanshu. This is better. And next is mental chanting of the mantra, where you are chanting the mantra completely in your mind. This is the most powerful. This is the best. 
right so mantra is best when it is kept in the mind and stotra is best when it is sung out aloud this difference sung out loud this is a difference that you should keep in mind all right and mansik japa mental chanting is the best right though you can chant while speaking also generally we recommend that in the starting the person should speak the mantra aloud and later on after practice one can do the mantra in the mind as well if you are not doing the karmala if you are using normal mala or in karmala also in the morning time both the hand should be like this facing upwards you are doing the mala in the noon time both hands should be straight like this when you are doing the karmala and in the evening the hand should be downward like this when you are doing the karmala in the morning time the hand should be near navel in the evening time then in the noon time the hand should be near the heart and in the evening time the hand should be near the mouth right it is in both type of process whether you are using normal mala or you are using karmala karmala means using your hands as mala other than that if you are using normal mala then the mala should be kept covered there is a particular cover for that it is called gomukhi if you don't have a gomukhi you should take a washed cloth if there is no washed cloth then you should like you know like what you say you should you know like take the water into the open air do it like this jhadna jisko kehte hai na hum jhad lena chahiye so it do it seven times it is considered as washed you should cover your hand while doing the mantra the mantra should be done while placing the mala in the right hand this finger should not touch the mala so mala should be kept on this sun finger should be holded using this satan finger and the chanting should be done using the thumb and there is a sumuru in the mala an extra bed with extra bed extra bead that is upside that sumuru sumeru should not be crossed so once you have started chanting the mala and you have reached the sumeru you have to rotate the mala and do the chanting again right this is something that you have to take care of and while chant while chanting the mantra then at that point of time you should not you know you should not seek or talk to anyone or do these things right your position should be firm and fixed this is very essential if during the chanting if the mala falls down then you should chant the mantra one more time if the mala touches your feet then you should wash the mala how you will wash the mala by sprinkling water over the process of margin and chant the same mantra two times more two times extra to purify the mala the japa is best done in home the japa is 100 times more powerful when done in a cow shed 1000 times more powerful when done in a forest garden or a pilgrimage 10000 times more powerful when it is done on mountains 1 lakh times more powerful when it is done on a bank of a river 1 crore times powerful when it is done in a temple and thought and you know multitude times infinite times more powerful when it is done near a shivaling so if you want to do you know mantra chanting on a mountain you can visit a hill station to mantra chanting there or in the banks of river you can book a hotel do mantra chanting there right so this is cheat codes this is technically cheat codes for people like us like you know if you chant one mala every day in your home that is one thing a good cheat code will be that on a special occasion you should go to a mountain or a bank of a river and there you do 10 malas and suppose someone is chanting one mala every day in home while speaking and you on a special occasion see say on shivaratri you go in a very you know very ancient well established shiva temple which is near a river on a top of a mountain also you go there and chant 10 malas in mansik japa right chant 10 malas while chanting the mantra in your mind only now as compared to chanting in home every day only one mala while speaking om namah shivaya your chanting that you have done on uh, on mountain in a shiva temple in front of shivalinga which is also beside a river you have done 10 mala of chanting mental chanting you know that this is multiple times more powerful than doing that normal japa right so this is cheat code generally when you have to make the mantra more effective or when you have done the remedy or the mantra multiple times but it is not showing the result these cheat codes we apply 
and this helps us. After the japa is completed, you should take the soil of the place because you have utilized that particular place for your worship and you have to show gratitude. So you should take the soil of the place and smear it over your forehead. If you don't do that, then it is believed that Indra will come and take the penance of your worship because you are not showing gratitude. So this should be done. Otherwise, the result of mantra chanting, you will lose. Right? So that is very, very important. Also, one thing is there that when you are doing worship, Sankalpam is important, right? You have to take Sankalp that, you know, I am this person, I am doing this Japa for this particular purpose. So in this Sankalpam, you say Om Vishnave Namah, Om Vishnave Namah, Om Vishnave Namah. Om Adya Brahmano Ahani Ditti Prarde Sri Svetavara Kalape Vaivas Pratamanavantre Ashtavin Sakame Kali Yuge Kali Pratam Charne Buddha Vatare Bhulo Kejam Budi Vipra Kande. Then the name of the place, name of the village, name of the year, name of the month, name of the paksh, right name of the day, name of the weekday, name of the tithi, name of the person, caste of the person, time and all of these things. So this is Difficult and generally priests know it. <clears throat> I will tell you that after you have done all the process of pranayam, etc. And you are starting with worship. What you should do, like taking cue from this particular thing, you should first of all tell that I am name of the person, I am Shubhamalok. On this particular day, you say 18th of October 2023, which is also a Tuesday. I am sitting at this place, Dehradun. And worshipping this God for this purpose of mine. May this wish of mine be fulfilled. So you can easily do it in your own native language also. Other than that, there are Sanskrit shlokas to take sankalp that also you can use. The point is that sankalpam is very, very important. And worship without sankalp just adds to your good karma and may not fulfill your wishes. So if you want to, you know, if you want to get your wishes fulfilled also, then Sankalpam is very, very important. This is something that you have to keep in mind. Talking of asan, as we have talked before, asan generally should be made up of kusha, blanket, deer skin, lion skin, or silk deer skin, lion skin is difficult to obtain today. So basically, the asan should be made up of kusha, blanket, or silk cloth. Directly sitting on the ground is not preferred. It is believed that if you directly sit on the ground and chant the mantra, then the mantra chanting does not yield any result. In fact, you only incur sin because of it. Why? Because you are getting channeled with energy as you chant the mantra. Words have power which cannot be destroyed and you are, you know, the energy is channeling through you. And if you sit on the ground, then the energy will go in the ground. The earth soaks up everything. So you sit on the asana so that energy remains in yourself only and it does not get drained. Right? So that you should do. Any asana which is made up of bamboo or have soil into it, leaves into it, cow dung into it, and, or some elements of people sacred fig into it, or any iron nail put into it anyway should not be used at all. Otherwise, it will be problematic. That such asan should not be used. Another thing is tilkam, as I as I told, one thing is there that tilkam should be, you know, tilkam should be applied in your forehead. To get name, fame, status, recognition, and to get the credit for the things you do, tilkam is very important and a very effective remedy which you cannot, you know, like, which you cannot ignore. And for those who are not getting name, fame, status, credit to their work, Tilakam is very important. Now, using Ganga water, soil, or Gopi Chandan, you can do Urdu Pund. Urdu Pund is basically the Tilakam upside down. You use your thumb and do the Tilakam upside down. You should use Bhasma, ashes. Generally, for home worship, you can take ashes of the Dupam. 
or you can take ashes from some holy place from some shiva temple you can use that to do tripund generally to do the tripund these two fingers are used to do the tripund it is done from left to right and then the thumb is used to do the to the third tripund once again left to right the maximum measure of this tripund should be from the end of the bro to the end of the bro this is six angul for brahmins it should be four angul this area to this area for a chatriya two angul this area to this area for a vaishya and one angul only this area to this area for a shudra so depending on if you are brahmin is learning teaching class chatriya is protector army class policeman army man etc vaishya is businessman class and shudra is service class accordingly the length of the tilakam should also be decided right tilakam as i told you beforehand that you should use the same material that you have used to do tilakam of the god and you should not mix new tilakam for yourself also while applying tilakam on yourself or on tilakam of tilakam on others you should be seated right and it should not be applied while you are standing one thing is there that while doing tilakam specifically with ashes before afternoon you can mix the ashes with sandalwood or you can mix any other tilakam with water and apply it after 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 afternoon the tilakam of anything or the tilakam of any gopi chandan ganga water etc or the tilakam of bhasma should be applied dry only right that is something that have to be kept in mind tilakam can only be applied on forehead but other than that bhasma can be applied on forehead neck heart and hands also normal worship you should only put tilakam on your forehead in on utsav for example janmashtami etc when there is a first festivity the tilakam can be applied all over the body so that's not a particular issue regarding pavitri i have already told you but i think 80% of the people today cannot you know arrange for proper pavitri so i am not going very deep into it right? but technically kusha grass you should have you should make pavitri out of it right and you should wear that pavitri in the sun finger if you are not having pavitri then you can use a gold uh, ring to wear in the finger gold ring is always pure gold is the favorite metal of the gods if gold is not available silver can be used if silver is not available then copper can be used right that you can wear in the place of pavitri right it always remains pure pavitri always pavitri also remains pure so you can use the same pavitri over and over again just make sure that if you have done some pitru karmas or if you have consumed food while eating the pavitri then the pavitri becomes impure in which scenario you have to untie the pavitri and either put it into some holy waters ganges etc or dig the earth a little bit and put it below the earth that you cannot use other than that the same pavitri you can keep on using or you can take some kushagras approve some kushagras on an amavasya day can store it for one month and can make multiple pavitris out of it that's not a problem pavitri made up of two strands of kusha should be twisted together and worn in the right hand right hand sun finger anamika finger what is called and a pavitri made up of three strands of kusha should be worn in the anamika finger sun finger of the left hand right that is very important how much you know how much strands should be there this is something that is important other than that it is told that a householder should do donation every day if you don't donate things every day then you are you know, because the complete world we hindus believe in vasudev kutumbakam the complete world is our family and if you are not doing donation every day you are accumulating sins actually so donation should be done every day and there is if you can, if you are only having one chapati to eat you should donate one fourth of it only but donation every should you should day you should sorry donation every day you should do right so that is very essential whatever is your capacity donation should be done every day and lastly for 
house holders you should not keep only one idol in your home you should keep more than one idol in your home right some things are there that two saligrams etc cannot be kept together which i have told you in the previous video this you should keep in mind other than that one more than one idol you should worship every day and the five major gods of shiva devi ganesha vishnu and surya should be worshiped every day by all householders to get the maximum 100% result of your remedies and worship procedure right so this was the process of worship in short that everyone can do at least with a little bit of effort that i have shared with you provided the fact that you follow all the rules and regulations all your remedies will start working like magic and then you will be able to realize the importance and the power of remedies I, I, as i always say na remedies are very powerful one should do remedies many people don't believe in remedies many astrologers don't believe in remedies you know why because they are shudras they don't know how to do remedies they don't know the right procedure there are shudras in the form of brahman also in kali yuga so you follow this process of mine then do remedies for one month and witness the miracle yourself hindu dharma is so great it is sustaining for 7000 10000 years it is for some reason so do it see the magic yourself